Hey everyone, welcome to Apple A Day. Today we're back with Apple Numbers and exploring one of its most useful features, pop-up menus. Also known as drop-down menus, pop-up menus can help make your spreadsheets more consistent and more professional. So let's jump right in. I've got a blank numbers document already open. We're gonna create a log sheet, something you guys might have seen me utilize in previous tutorials. First, I'll add some column titles, date, log type, time, and details. I'll get rid of these other columns by selecting them while holding the shift key, then clicking on this drop down arrow and choosing delete selected columns from the menu. Then I'll make this detailed column wider simply by dragging the right edge of the column further to the right. I'll also rename this table to log sheet. I can do that by double clicking on the title and then editing it. So these column names are pretty self explanatory and we're not gonna spend any time filling in the data. Log type is the only column we're interested in that has to do with pop-up menus. This column is going to contain text like support, customer call, development, etc. Basically describing and categorizing the log entry. But rather than typing in the text for the log type for every single entry, it would be nice if we could choose from a list of predefined log types. And that's where pop-up menus come in. So I'm going to click on a cell where I want the pop-up menu to appear. I'll select the first cell under log type. Then over on the right with the format and cell tabs selected, I'll change the data format to pop-up menu. When you do this, three placeholder items are created automatically. Item one, item two, and item three. And back to the cell, you can see that there's now a drop-down arrow which appears if the cell is selected. If I click on that arrow, it displays the three items defined in the data format section over on the right. Let's rename these placeholder items. You can do that simply by double clicking on each item. I'll rename item one to support and item two to documentation and item three to development. Notice that the cell changes immediately to match the renamed items. To add more items, just click on the plus button. I'll add customer call and one more called miscellaneous. And of course, if you want to delete one of these items, simply select it and click on the minus button. Now, Numbers doesn't automatically order these items alphabetically, so you'll have to drag and drop the items to reorder them. I'll move support to the bottom, development above documentation, and finally, customer call to the beginning. Over on the left, clicking on the cell drop-down arrow, I can now see all five options. Currently, though, the pop-up menu must always display a selection and it will default to the very first item in the list. But I don't want this pop-up to display customer call for each entry. I'd rather it be blank until I can select the appropriate log type myself. Luckily, Numbers has an option for that. With the cell selected, go back to the format section and see this pop-up which is set to start with first item. Let's change that to start with blank. With that changed, let's go back to the cell and if you click on the drop down arrow again, you can see that the first item is now set to none. If I select none, the cell doesn't actually display the word none, it just appears to be blank. And appearing blank is perfect because it forces you to always make a selection for the log type. Okay, so now we need to apply this to every cell in the column. There's a couple of ways we can do that. One way is to simply copy and paste. I'll select the cell, then press Command C to copy it. I'll then select the range of cells below it and press Command V to paste. And if I click on any one of these cells, you can see that the pop-up menu was copied successfully to each cell in the range. Copy and paste is also useful if you want to copy a pop-up menu from one document to another. It saves you having to recreate it. I'm going to undo this by pressing Command Z a few times. A better way to duplicate the pop-up menu is to use autofill. And if you're interested, I've got a detailed tutorial on autofill right here. So with the cell selected, I'm going to hover over the bottom of the cell until this yellow circle or handle is displayed. Then I'll simply select the handle and drag it down to the last row. And the cell's pop-up contents have been successfully duplicated to each cell. If you need to add more rows, you can do that pretty easily without also having to copy the pop-up menu to each row. I'll select a cell in the last row and press Option down arrow a few times to insert several blank rows below. And the pop-up menu has been copied successfully to each row. That is super convenient. 
Obviously, when you're entering data into your log sheet, you would then fill in the date and the time taken, as well as the details of the log entry. We're not going to do any of that. This video is specifically about creating a pop-up menu. And with that said, that's it. You're now a pop-up menu pro in Apple Numbers. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you never miss a tip or trick. I'm John Martins. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode of Apple a Day.